Start to feel like shit, hand to the words. I wouldn't even make a dial if you put me on the climb. Let me be there for a while. When I look into your eyes, I don't see the same smile. Probably blame me for the drugs I was on before you found me. Hey yo, what's good? It's your boy Man B, aka Piff. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for checking out another video. If you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button as we're on the road to 700. Please and thank you. Shout out to my new subscribers and the one that's been here since day one, including the ones that I got today. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the shares. So like this video so we can get a couple more people to check this video out. Share this video to any of your platforms, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Share this video. Twitter, share this video. Let's make some liberals mad today. Comment down below and tell me what you think about this topic as well. So I wanted today, I wanted to go in on Adam Toledo. Maybe I might be a week behind, but I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. My condolences go out to this young man because anybody else I don't feel sorry for. AKA Lil, Di Lil Diablo, a 13 year old Latin King hitter from Chicago. It's pretty much, you know, pretty much what it is. Was being influenced by a grown ass man by the name of Robin Rubin. And for some reason, a police officer is being blamed for the death of this young man. Is it me or these liberals love to side with criminals and the, and the victims? I could be wrong. 13 year old out at 2 o'clock in the morning needs his ass beat. Could use better words, but it is what it is. A 13 year old out at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, it don't even matter. 13 year olds need to be in the house by 9 o'clock. My son will be 12 this year. I, I wish he would think that he could be able to be out past <laughs> that street light coming on. When I came when I came up, I mean, all the kids I knew was in, in, the, in the house by the time the street light came on. And if you didn't, then, you know, you end up in situations like this right here. So I don't know why people are thinking that just now in 2021 that stuff like this is actually happening when this stuff been happening for years. These little young guys want to be game bangers and everything else, but, you know, always end up on the wrong side of the Ferris wheel of death it hurts my heart to see so many young men like this like this young Latino guy and many other blacks in different other races that are influenced by gang culture with no guidance out here in the street that are being led into early destruction and whether that's them you know being, being harmed themselves or them out here later on in life harming someone else and to think about the fact that a lot of people don't or you know don't believe that a 13 year old kid caused any type of harm to anyone is probably the stupidest thing I've ever heard because you know in many different in, in many of these different liberal democrat cities democrat ran cities with black mayors and black police commissioners and it's the same story in all of them. It's just different areas where we do have these young hitters out here on the street putting in work for these grown ass individuals who, to me, in my eyes, are scared their damn self. I try my best not to diss these games when I make these videos, man, but at the same time, it's like, how could you not? I don't, it don't matter what you are, Latin King, Gangsta Disciple, whatever these Chicago gangs they got going on, Crips, Bloods, whatever they got in Chicago, Vice Lords, and this is not even just Chicago. 
I would have never thought that this was just really something that that we do as people as in recruiting these kids into joining gang affiliations and you know sacrificing these kids lives over our own bullcrap a lot of people looking at this video man gonna look at it as he shouldn't have died and whoop de whoop whatever the story that y'all want to say it doesn't cause for him to die and it don't mean he needed to die and whatever y'all want to say but the thing is I say this there's a lack of parenting going on in America whether that's black people whether there's Hispanics, Latinos and whether there's white people as well we got white kids shooting up schools, shooting up FedEx buildings. We got black people gunning each other down 10, 15 people at a time. And then we still have the Latinos out here or Mexicans, Hispanics out here doing it, doing stuff like this to the youth. Not saying that other races don't do this as well, but this is the story that we're talking about today. Every time something like this happened, man, where one of these criminals, man, come into contact with the police and we get one of these people off the off the streets by the force of death, it's always the police fault. It's never the mother's fault. It's never the father's fault. It's never the upbringing. It's always some type of excuse for the person. But I'm going to leave y'all with this. I'm going to leave y'all with, you know what I'm saying, something I've seen, the um, Chicago um, Union Police Chief, or whatever you want to call him, speaking in Sean Hannity, man, about what's going on. Love y'all. Peace, man. It's now with reaction. Chicago Police Union President John uh, Canazaro is with us. Uh, John, thank you for being here. All right. I can show Thanks the pictures, me, and I'll show the still pictures. You can see clearly that that Adam Toledo has a gun in his right hand just in a fraction, it's less than a second, the police officer has to decide is as he's turning, it seemed like he flipped the gun. Is that what you see? That's absolutely what happened. Eight tenths of a second. That's it. Now, you can see the gun in the picture and right behind that barrier, that wall there, that's where the gun was found. So it was it seemed to be flipped flipped or dropped by Adam Toledo. How does the officer possibly know whether when he's there seeing the gun turning and to put his hands up that he flipped it? He didn't know that, did he? No, he had no idea that it had left his hand by the time it popped back out from behind that fence. And again, I've said it time and time again. Our officers, not only in Chicago, in Illinois, or even in this country, are under no obligation to be fired upon or struck by gunfire before defending their own life. We're not, and it should never be. I don't know if that's the long game here or what they intend the policies to be that we have to, you know, subject ourselves to gunfire before we take action, but it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the need for body cams, because I think footage, you know, helps us tell the whole story here. So in this case, if this police officer didn't have his body cam on, would it be a very different future for him at this point? Well, I think it'd be a lot murkier. Uh, I, I think the fact that the weapon was recovered right there, you'd still have the video from the high school that shows the long shot down the alley. Uh, and it clearly shows the subject discarding something behind the fence but you know there was a disgusting press conference yesterday and before we even get to there you talked about the, the victims in Chicago uh, less than one mile away from where that incident occurred last night a 17 year old girl was struck by a bullet and ended up dying at the hospital traveling in a car at 7 p.m. in broad daylight right down the street from where that happened subjected to the same silly non reckless actions that those two took that night by shooting at a vehicle this is a common occurrence there but the mayor in her press conference never even once mentioned the word gangs not once but talked about the police department and systemic racism and everything else under the sun but not, never anything about the gangs 
I'm trying to understand and wrap my arms around, and, and I'll plead guilty to when my kids were younger, uh, being a helicopter parent. I, I'm having a hard time coming to grips with this young man, 13 years old, on a Monday night, out with a 21-year-old convict with a gun violation, um, and being out at 2.30 in the morning. Nothing good, my father used to say, nothing good happens after midnight. Nothing good is ever going to happen to a 13-year-old at that time in the morning out with somebody with that track record. I, I agree, and, you know, I, I, I caution, you know, going too hard after the mother. Uh, you know, I, I was a school resource officer for four years. I I'm saw not attacking firsthand. your mother. I'm, I, it's, it, what no, it no, is no, I'm to just me saying, I get where you were going it with it. It is sad. I, well, I agree, but there's been a lot of conversation about the mother and him not being home yet again and not reported missing a second time. But my point was that I've seen this many, many times where parents are just at wit's ends with kids who are being led astray and they don't know what to do with them, especially at that age where they're so impressionable. You know, it, this does fall at CPS's doorstep. If the teachers were in school teaching and he was in school learning, whether he was in bed waiting for the next day, at some point a teacher or a counselor may have been able to get at least his attention and steer him in a different direction rather than a 21-year-old and a Latin King gang. Yeah. All right, John, Kat, and Zara, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Now. Started from like seeing hand to the worst. I wouldn't even make a dial if you put me on the climb. Let me be there for a while. When I look into your eyes, I don't see the same smile. Probably blame me for the drugs. I was on them before you found me. Huh? Seem like everybody judged me so I ain't